way for generations. Dates in the Bible don't quite match the marriage certificate. Hey, Genies, how are you? And welcome to another edition of Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. My name is Fisher on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And this episode is brought to you by BYU TV's Relative Race, Sunday nights at 9 Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific time. Hey, we've got some great guests lined up today. Nick Barrett from England's version of Who Do You Think You Are? Plus, we're going to be talking to another British fellow, John. Archer, who made a great find using a technique he learned about on Extreme Genes, and photo detective Maureen Taylor answering your questions. Hey, if you haven't done it yet, make sure you sign up for our weekly Genie newsletter. It's easy to do. Just go to our website, ExtremeGenes.com, or on our Facebook page. We take care of you with a blog each week and links to podcasts, present and past, and also links to stories as a genealogist you're going to be really interested in. Right now, it is time to head out to Beantown and talk to my good friend, David Allen Lambert the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. Hi, David. How are you? I'm doing great. We have a very interesting thing parked in front of our building these days. Really? Boston. Yeah, I like to call it the mini Mayflower or the Boston Mayflower. <laughs> <laughs> Just recently, we had the uh, open house for the Mayflower 400th, and with the special guests of the Wampanoag Nation with singers and dancers, we brought in a 10-foot long by 8-foot high and 4-foot wide Mayflower replica. Wow. That's and fun. It is now camped in front of NEHDS, yeah. Very okay. nice. Yeah, I need to go down the Charles River. You know, I just need to paddle because now I now have a boat that is kind of like the size of a canoe. <laughs> but no, it's uh, it's really wonderful, and it's a way to kick off the Mayflower 400. So people, if they come during daylight hours, they'll see it in front of NEHS. So it would be hard to miss. There you go. An easy <laughs> selfie to take. Very true. That's what we're hoping for. Well, we had lots of the family history on news, and I know we always are hearing about World War II veterans being returned home. And I, I, another story, this one is in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, where a uh, MIA for 75 years, Staff Sergeant Carl M. Schaefer, who was 22, was on board a B-24 J bomber, nicknamed the Galloping Gus, had crashed into the Tarawa Atoll in the Pacific back in January of 44. He has now had his remains located and brought home for reburial. And that's all through DNA. Isn't that amazing? And you think this is 75 years later, they're still bringing guys home. And there are so many of them, tens of thousands. But they're saying maybe a third of them could still be identified through DNA. And think there are children of these veterans. You know, they were you know in their 80s. You know, dad went yep. off to war and never came home again. So there's it's closure for a lot of them. And, and I remember when we started doing these stories, there were still widows. That's that right. Were starting to have their husbands brought home. It's it's amazing. Speaking of relatives, how wonderful would it be for you and I to sit down with our great grandfather? And if they live long enough, now my great grandfather died in 1921, for instance. So that's <laughs> he died almost 50 years before I was born. Mine died in. 1893. <laughs> oh, well, H.G. Wells has a great little story called The Time Machine. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, out in Bakersfield, California, there is a 110-year-old, they call him a super centenarian, Modesto Lopez Bautista, who just recently celebrated his 110th birthday. He was born in Mexico. His great-grandson is honoring his ancestor by interviewing him and getting the genealogical stories. What a great time machine that Modesto can talk about his grandparents, for instance, that were probably born well into the time of the Mexican Revolution yeah. with America. It's insane. It's And this kid's in eighth grade. He's a middle schooler, and he's writing family history for school reports and wants to go back to Mexico and gather more stories on the family. It's great. And I'll tell you, I hope he lives to be 100 years old so he can pass on the stories to his great-grandchildren. Yep. And and the link, by the way, to this story is at ExtremeGenes.com. 
Well, you know, a lot of people use Ancestry DNA and Ancestry in general, and I just heard that Ancestry is now rolling out a new messaging center in the coming weeks. So, for instance, if you sent out a note to a DNA match or someone you think might match you on their family tree online, you may never know if it's ever going to be read. Now, with the new messaging, you actually know when it was read, and you can also tell when the person's online, so you can chat with them. Oh, wow. Kind of like Facebook. That's yeah. very cool. Mm-hmm. That could ho- hopefully cool. help improve some of the response from some of the messaging. Absolutely. So thank you, Krista Cowan and the rest of the team with Ancestry on the record who let me know the inside scoop on that. That was great. Well, you know, the Golden State Killer was just one of many of these DNA solved cold cases. And a new one has come up from a coffee cup, which has now led to the arrest from a murder in 1972. Wow. Um, the police have arrested a gentleman out in Washington State on charges of first degree premeditated murder of a young lady that was found near his home, but now the DNA suggests that he is the alleged killer. Isn't that so amazing? More to follow up on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it happens, and it's, and it's starting to become something we see very routinely now. It is, and, you know, it's giving closure for families. I mean, it's a little different than World War II veterans being returned home, but, I mean, figure the families waited 46 years to figure out who killed their daughter. Well, on a happier note, this week the blogger spotlight shines on Tammy Mullen, who wrote a book on the World War I veterans from Parma, New York. She's done over 99 sketches that tell the story, detailed documents, but she's also put it as a blog. And her blog is withourboys.wordpress.com. And her mission with doing this book is that everyone has a story and it just needs to be told. So before the armistice centennial last November, she and her husband decided to put together a book with our boys, the honor roll. So Tammy and Kyle, hats off to you and check out her blog. It's about the project and it's a really great way of looking for anybody who wants to tell the story of the veterans in their community. And I suggest that anyone pick up that same idea and write a book for your town. Exactly. Yeah. Well, if you are not a member of American Ancestors, you can use the checkout code EXTREME and save $20 on AmericanAncestors.org. All right, David. As always, great to talk to you. Thanks so much. And we'll talk to you again next week. All righty. And coming up next, I'm going to talk to Nick Barrett. He is the host of Who Do You Think You Are in Great Britain? And he also makes appearances on Australia's version of the show. We're going to get his story, where he thinks family history is going. There's so much to cover. It's all coming up for you next on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show in three minutes. Hey, Janie's Fisher here. And, you know, as I was watching BYU TV's relative race this past weekend, I was really struck by how emotional this was for these people to meet their relatives and how similar it is to when we find a deceased relative and learn their story, except these people get to meet them in person. How cool is that? And this past week, the most emotional moment was when Shanta of Team Blue actually met her first cousin on her dad's side. And it wasn't Shanta who was particularly emotional. It was her relative relative who was, who had never met anybody on her father's side. And the tears were flowing, and yours will be too, as you see it. And then again, later in the show, one of the teams is eliminated. As always, a lot of emotion and a lot of fun with their rat race challenge this week, and a lot of trash talk along the way as well. So much fun. It's Relative Race on BYU TV, Sunday nights at 9 Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, and you can stream it using your BYU TV app or going to BYUtv.org. Hey, Genies, it is Fisher here. And do you have a photograph problem on your hands? I mean, like five or 10,000 nostalgic pre-digital snapshots. Well, now it's extra affordable to use ScanMyPhotos.com, the company which professionally has digitized 600 million pictures. And they can now scan your pictures for as little as one cent each. Yeah, one cent. They got the idea after a recent Oprah magazine profile on them. Yeah, they're big time. Readers were explaining they had thousands of pictures to scan and we're looking for a more affordable way to scan pictures so with scanmyphotos.com you can scan 10,000 pictures for as little as $100 and by the way save 
20% on their most popular service, their prepaid photo scanning box that includes same-day scanning and all extra add-ons. And to access it all, of course, the promo code is Extreme Jeans. That's ScanMyPhotos.com, promo code Extreme Jeans. Finally, a solution. Legacy Tree Genealogist is a proud sponsor of Extreme Jeans. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've worked with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476 or register online to get a free estimate. Right now, you can save up to $100 on professional genealogy research. But hurry, this offer expires at the end of the month. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. Hey, we're back. It's Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And before we get to my visit with Nick Barrett, I've got to share this story with you I just found. On one of our relatives, one of those lines where you just bring down all the descendants and you see what you can find. And an old digitized newspaper revealed this interesting story from 1892 in New York. George T. Mercer, age 21, formerly a harmonicon player, well-known upon the variety stage was arraigned yesterday in the general sessions to receive sentence under a conviction of betraying Miss Maggie Cannon of 319 East 100th Street under a promise of marriage. Mercer married Miss Sarah Elizabeth McCord, who is one of my relatives, with whom he eloped. He is plain looking and undersized. His counsel asked Judge Martine for clemency and Mercer wept while his lawyer was talking. The judge said, if I should so far forget my official duty as to show clemency to such a scoundrelly wrecker of women's lives as you are, I feel that I could never look a worthy woman in the face again. I sentence you to state prison for four years and ten months and fine you $100. Different times. <laughs> All right, on to my visit with Nick Barrett at Roots Tech. One of the things about Roots Tech I've always loved is you meet people and instantly have a relationship here because we're all into family history and discovering history and connecting our families. And this is my new friend, Nick Barrett from Great Britain. For 16 years, he's been a host and a researcher on Who Do You Think You Are? And Nick, how did you get started in that? Oh, it was pure coincidence. I'm a historian. I love telling stories. And I've worked in the media for a few years before the show came along. And I was just literally looking around for something else to do. Some of the folk from the previous show I was working on moved to the production company. I was developing the idea with the BBC. One of those perfect coincidences that came together. But I never thought it would lead to this sort of global explosion of the programme coming not just in the UK, but to Ireland, Australia, here in the States. It's been fantastic, an incredible journey, as they say. So you've traveled the world and you've been connected yeah. with the Australian version of the show as well. Yeah, exciting news. They've just been commissioned for an 11th season. Oh. So wow. I get to do a bit of on-screen stuff with folk that I just find incredible. So, yeah, it's a privilege. It's a real pleasure yeah, and a really privilege is. to be involved in these shows. Now, you are telling me earlier that you had an incident with the BBC. They said nobody's going to be interested in family history anymore when you had that <laughs> show, and they cancelled it. And this well, was just before DNA came along and changed everything. Yeah, this was a radio show we were doing called Tracing Your Roots, and it was a lovely way to explore other people's family histories. As you know, Who Do You Think You Are is about the celebrity roots. And this was stories that you'd probably find sitting around in the coffee tables at Roots Tech. So we explored their stories, it was wonderful. But yeah, they stopped it because they thought, no one's interested anymore. <laughs> they want the celebs only. And of course, DNA has now changed the way we look at our backgrounds. We explored a little bit on the show, but no one would thought it would take off. Isn't well, what funny? do they know? Well, <laughs> what do they know? So tell me about some of the celebrities that you've worked with and, and some of their reactions, the ones that have touched you the most that you've worked on. For me, I suppose the most telling moment that we were onto something big was the very first person that was screened back in 2004. A chap called Bill Oddie, 
He'd had a career in TV and broadcasting as a comedian and then an ornithologist, so he was passionate about wildlife. And he wasn't the most obvious choice right. for a high-profile celebrity. Sorry, Bill, don't mean to say that, but <laughs> it's one of those things. And we wanted to tell the story of social history using his ancestors, I suppose, as points of reference. And it was only when we got talking to him about his motivation for doing the show that we realised there was something far more powerful under the surface. He had had a very difficult upbringing. He didn't know his mum. She'd had various mental health problems throughout his childhood growing up. And that was his motivation. He wanted to find out what had happened. And in the course of the research, we found a dark secret that he had an older sister, but she had died only five days old, that had been covered up by the family. Oh, wow. And that tragic loss had triggered some of these moments for his mum. Uh, depression, uh, trauma, stress, but it was misdiagnosed and so she was placed into an asylum and given in the 1950s contemporary treatment, electric shock therapy, that made her worse. Now for Bill, this was a revelation. Yeah. And for us. And now he would, understood and maybe could yeah. forgive her a little bit there was for that moment how she of, was and what he lost. There was a cathartic moment for him, but it also made him reflect on his own battles with depression. And suddenly everything clicked. It was that seismic change in his world view by just going about one generation. Now we made the show, but it changed the way we thought about our celebrities. It wasn't us imposing a narrative on them. It was them telling us <laughs> what motivated them. And the reactions were far more emotional, raw, powerful, but also it brought in larger audiences because people could connect with those eureka moments, sure. but at a level that wasn't kings and queens, but just humble, ordinary, everyday folk. That's the power of what we do. Well, and that's the thing about celebrities, we all feel like we know them. Yeah. So yeah. to see, see one of them come on your show and have these incredible revelations, then that starts to connect, well, maybe I can do the same thing. I think it strips away the veneer of celebrity. Yeah, and doesn't some it? folk that you happen to see happen. And that is the magic of the show. The ones that haven't worked as well have been the thespians who think that they're meant to emote at this time. Is this where I get sad? And actually, they haven't quite bought into what we're trying to do with them. Is this where I just get be sad? normal, just be yourself. So, yeah, it's those raw emotional responses. And again, that seems to have really touched a nerve. I've never quite understood it. I've always researched other people's. Yeah. Until last fall, when a document dropped out of the clear blue sky about my grandmother, who we thought was a typical brick wall, illegitimate, no living relatives, no documentation. And suddenly we found her birth certificate that showed that she was born in Belgium to an American father. Oh, and wow. the person that she had thought was her godmother was actually her biological mother. And so there was that element of, wow, we've got this incredible story tinged with sadness that we couldn't tell her. It really got me in a way that nothing had affected me wow. before because it was personal Well, because it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't yeah. yours before, but now it You can was. always walk away from that research because it's someone else's story, but now you own that. You own that revelation. So you get that sense of what it means to other people. It's very personal, isn't it? it you know, is. it's amazing. We can all come together, but we all have very unique stories. Yeah, but it's the know? stories that make them interesting. The, it, it yeah. is. Uh, you obviously need to do the connectivity in terms of family trees and DNA, but actually that doesn't tell you the story of someone's life. And that's what I love. That's the historian in me. I love telling stories and sharing stories, some to greater degrees than others, but it is just that passing on of an interesting story. That's where we connect at a very fundamental level. And so you're still loving it after all these years, yeah, aren't you? Absolutely. I can still see it in your eyes. I've got the glints. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a detective process. Every yes. single research trail is different. You do the general stuff, certification, certificate, census. Totally. But, but it's but where I, it leads you. And it's the same thing with DNA. We think the DNA revelations are all kind of same. Well, the adoptee oh. finds his parents. No, no, no. Oh. There's a lot more behind these things. It's what happened to them. Why did they not stay together? Or yeah. how did they, somebody get given up? I mean, everybody's is unique. And I, I'm always amazed by the variety yeah. of stories that come out of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a tool. It's yeah. not the end. It's the means to an end. That's it. And as with all those certificates, no one fell in love with genealogy because they got a certificate through the post. They fell in love with what it told them, just like the DNA results. I'm waiting on a couple with this mysterious grandmother. Sure. And I'm on tenter hooks. <laughs> and I know I've got to get up with a lot of the interpretation, but it will take me to a whole new series of connections that I want to make. Now, you're going to be a keynote speaker at the premiere Roots Tech London coming up this, this fall. It's so exciting. In October, Roots Tech is coming to Europe. We're so honoured that London has been chosen as the venue, and I can't wait to see the British audiences respond 
to the Reach Tech phenomenon. It is just so amazing and awesome spending time here because it's this mashup of high tech and DNA with real education. And that's the difference with many of the genealogy shows in the UK. It's about speakers and it is about the celebrity story, but the education here is so strong. You learn so much, not just from the sessions, but from talking to folk in the room. That's right. That's so right. I can't wait for all of that to then descend upon London in October and wow the nation. Wow, so well, I'm, I'm, really sure you, I'm sure you will, because I'm sure you've got a lot to talk about. Oh, well, yeah, I think there are only one hour slots. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, how are you feeling about being the keynote speaker? Well, I love talking to people, so excited, but a little nervous because of the honor and the pressure to get this right. Are yeah, you one of these TV keynote. people, you know, you can be on camera in a room with just your people, but suddenly you got all these living, breathing folks in front of you. It changes the dynamic a little bit? It does a bit. It's a weird one because when you're doing TV, you can go, oh, actually, no, I got that wrong. Retake. Right. Yeah, live TV is a bit different, obviously, but you have that safety net. When you're out there in front of an audience of hundreds or thousands, you want to get it right. You need to take all of those performance skills and present. So I hate talking with slides. Right, I, I'm I'll with you. I'll write stuff on the screen, you don't need me there, you can read it. I want to talk, I want to explain, I want to emote and pass on the passion I feel while still being relevant. So um, TED Talks are a really great way of right. practicing. You've got a finite time, you've got to get the information across in an engaging way. I've done some of those and they're great fun. So in that sense, I don't mind it too much, <laughs> but I do feel very privileged to be the keynote and therefore that comes with a certain responsibility with its own sorts of pressures. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun and I'm sure that you've got so many followers in Great Britain that are going to be thrilled to see you speak there. Yes, well that's always great fun doing it on home soil, but what I want to do most of all is try and encourage as many lovely folk here to come over. I'm sure many will have British roots, oh, so it's yes. more than just coming to the expo and the show and learning about what you can do in terms of British research techniques, spend some time, travel the country, stand in that graveyard where the ancestors buried, visit the factory where they worked. That's the experience, that empathy, that connection that makes it far more than just a document or a story. It brings it to life in a really visceral way. So come on over to London and experience that in person. That's the thrill, that's the excitement. There you go. Fascinating visit at Roots Tech with Nick Barrett, the host of Who Do You Think You Are in Great Britain. And coming up next, we're going to talk to another Brit. He's a regular listener of Extreme Genes, took one of our tips and made an amazing find. And you're going to love what he has to tell you. Coming up next in five minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chartmasters' option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chartmasters today at FamilyChartmasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chartmasters will give the greatest care to your family history. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the grandma gap .com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. 
Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. You have found us. It is Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And, you know, over the years, we've talked about interesting little tricks that you can use to find different family heirlooms. And and one of them I've talked about is going to eBay and putting in some search terms there. Maybe you don't find anything right away, but if you save those terms over time, Some of these things can come to you, and I've talked about several of those things that have come to me over the years using this technique, and little did I know that there was a man in England, northwest England, in the area of Manchester, named John Archer, who listens to the show, and he recently had some great success with this. John, welcome to Extreme Genes. Nice to have you. Thank you. Nice to be here. So, what happened? Well, I had this guy on my family tree, George Archer. He was the brother of my great-grandfather, and that's all he was, really. I knew his wife, I knew his children, and following your advice from your show, I had the keywords medal and archer stored in my eBay account, and one day, George Archer's medals came to me. You got to be kidding me. Now, from what era are we talking about? Medals from what war? So these were from the uh, First World War. Uh, yeah, it was, it was killed in, in the First World War and his medals posthumously awarded to his wife. Now, you, you must have been kind of taken back by this. When you saw it, did you really believe what you were seeing? Because I've been through that. It's like, oh, come on, really? And then I start going through them in more and more details. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all, yeah. because um, <laughs> his, the, the medals were actually awarded to, to his wife. Uh, okay. And, uh, and on, on the, the memorial book, it said he was the son of, of Thomas and Mary Archer. Um, now, his parents were, were Samuel and Anne, uh, not Thomas and Mary. Okay. Uh, so I initially ignored it, but something niggled at me. Something was biting at me saying, It was oh, niggling just, just at you. Little, Wow. Yeah, just just take it a little bit further and research it. I mean, this guy might be related to me. It might be nice to find his story. Sure. But Thomas and Mary were his his wife's parents because his parents were were dead at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And he'd he'd listed his wife's parents as his next of kin on his war records. So That's kind of odd, uh, isn't it? So obviously you made the assumption this isn't your guy, but maybe he's a relative of some sort. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, f- I followed it through. I had to follow it through and, and find out a little bit more about him. And and what did you discover? What caused this problem? Well, the the memorial book said that his wife was Amy, which I knew that my George's wife was Amy. So it was a little bit suspicious there. Um, but she was listed as Amy Copland. It turns out that Amy remarried after George had died. And so finding the marriage certificate, I managed to find out that she was previously Amy Archer, maiden name Healy. And it turns out that it was our guy. Uh, It was my George. Wow. And so you were able to obtain these medals. How many medals were involved? Uh, it's the, 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 tr- the triple medals that, that most people who were involved in the First World War were awarded. Um, they do have uh, nicknames. I'm not 100% sure what they are. But, um, yeah, it's the, uh, the star uh, and the two round medals. And so. what's his relationship to you exactly? He was my great-grandfather's brother. Wow. And, and does he have any descendants? He had three daughters, Phyllis, who was born in 1907, I can't find where she went to. I've, I've got no trace of her whatsoever. Then there was an Alice Elizabeth. She was born in 1909, but sadly died the same year, literally months before George was killed oh. uh, in France. So obviously he's got no legacy whatsoever, even from Amy's follow-up marriage. They had a, a child who died in infancy as well. So there was just nobody to carry on his story at all. Oh. And you've got it now. So I'm going to ask you, because I know people are wondering, how much did you have to pay to obtain this incredible treasure? Well, I hope my wife's not listening, but it was just short of 400 pounds I paid for them. But oh, wow. That is <laughs> To me, money. Yeah. the money wasn't an object. It wasn't it was, an it object. It was more about getting them back into the family. Was there uh, any bidding on it? Did you get in a bidding war with anybody, or was it just a straight buy it? Yeah, yeah. There was, uh, there was somebody else bidding against me, and it went 
up and up and up and it got to about 350 pound and then i just put in a, a large bid above that at the last minute <laughs> just said i'm going to make sure back. absolutely yeah. make sure absolutely. yeah you don't want to lose that and i've been in that situation before that is remarkable so what have you done with this treasure uh, i've i've framed them i've i've put them on like a, a green gauze background and put them in a frame and they're they're on the wall now uh, and I, I show them off to to everybody who, who comes to see me and and all the family have seen them now and it's I, I love telling the story oh yeah and I'm sure they're just as amazed as we all are I mean I think even though I've done this for some time every time it happens I'm amazed <laughs> I think it's an incredible thing and it's something that anybody can do. And you never know when this gift is just going to drop out of the sky and into your hands like that. So you've gotten a lot of attention as a result of this story. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Visiting family. I usually take the the medals with me and and tell the story to to whoever I go and visit. We've got quite a large family. So and and obviously that side of the family are related. So they, they always enjoy the story. So what can you tell us about this man, George Archer, and his service in World War I? When, when did he go into action, and when did he get killed, and what was the circumstance? So he was born in Scarborough uh, in the uh, north of England, mm-hmm. and he was listed in the census there all the way up to 1911, and then he disappeared. So that was the end of his story for me until I found the medals. Uh, it turns out he moved to Bradford, but he had already enlisted in the army in Scarborough. He was enlisted in the Yorkshire Regiment, the 5th Battalion, and they were shipped off to France to the Battle of the Somme, uh, everybody knows about. He was killed on the 13th of September, 1916, uh, and afterwards he was memorialised on the Tietval Memorial in France, which is the memorial to the unfound bodies, which was quite sad, really. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Have you found local historical societies that might be interested in displaying it and telling your story? Not yet, but I'm probably going to get in touch with them. I'm visiting Scarborough in the next couple of weeks, so I'm going to go and see the museum there um, and and speak to them about it. And there's a a civic society there as well that are are always interested in stories like this. Yeah, absolutely. So have you set up any other search terms in eBay? Uh, Yeah, I've got one for every name in the family. (laughs) (laughs) Do you include the location to help narrow it a little bit? Do you get a lot Uh, of emails resulting from those that are irrelevant? They're mostly searching for medals, because that's quite an interest of mine. I like the war side of things, the forces side of things. But I've just got plain search terms and, like you say, locations, because I've got family from all over the UK, Wales, Yorkshire. So wherever we're from, there's, there's a search term saved in there. Yeah. I've always thought, is there any place other than eBay you could do that? And I would imagine you could. You could almost do it in reverse, you know, where you put an ad out there or you'd say, hey, I'm looking for this. But I don't know where you do it exactly. Maybe that's something somebody can share with us. I guess one of the real good resources that I use are groups on Facebook, history groups, local history groups, DNA groups and things like that on Facebook are really good for talking to people about exactly this. Mm -hmm. And have you located anything as a result of those groups? Uh, Family, yeah. My other side, my my mum's side of the family, there's um, a group for the Hughes, that's the name. Um, I've met many members of that family through that group living worldwide. And and you can probably obtain some items from them as well. There are a lot of people who say, I don't need this, but you'd love it, so I'm happy to give it to you. Photographs as well. That's, yeah. that's a key that's one. That's the big lots thing, and isn't lots it? Of photographs. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it has been a delight to talk to you. He's John Archer. He lives in Northwest England near Manchester and uh, quite a find on eBay. It's a great technique to use. And thanks for joining us, John. Really enjoyed it. No, thanks very much. It's my pleasure. All right. And coming up next, it's Maureen Taylor. She is the photo detective, and she's going to kick off a brand new feature we're doing on the show. It's Ask Us Anything. And we're going to cover all kinds of different topics. In her case, of course, photographs. We'll be talking preservation. We'll be talking DNA. Hear what she has to say about some of your most common questions coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show.
Legacy Tree Genealogist is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've worked with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call us toll-free at 1-800-818-1476 or register online to get a free estimate. Right now, you can save up to $100 on professional genealogy research. But hurry, this offer expires at the end of the month. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. Roots Tech 2019 may be over, but the Family History Fund doesn't have to end. Visit RootsTech.org to view recorded content from the event. Rewatch the inspiring keynote addresses from celebrity speakers Patricia Heaton, Saru Briley, and Jake Shimabukuru. A number of classes are also available to view for free from popular genealogists such as Miko Cleland, Diane Southard, and Valerie Elkins. Want access to even more content from Roots Tech? Purchase the virtual pass and get access to 18 recorded conference sessions. Watch playbacks from any device from the comfort of your own home. Enjoy exclusive content from popular presenters like Kenyatta Berry, D. Joshua Taylor and Lisa Louise Cook. Purchase your all-access virtual pass at RootsTech.org for only $129. Roots Tech 2019 may be over, but it lives on through the Roots Tech virtual pass. Download yours today. Visit RootsTech.org to learn more. Hey, Genies, it is Fisher here. And do you have a photograph problem on your hands? I mean, like five or 10,000 nostalgic pre-digital snapshots. Well, now it's extra affordable to use ScanMyPhotos.com, the company which professionally has digitized 600 million pictures. And they can now scan your pictures for as little as one cent each. Yeah, one cent. They got the idea after a recent Oprah magazine profile on them. Yeah, they're big time. Readers were explaining they had thousands Thousands of pictures to scan, and we're looking for a more affordable way to scan pictures. So with ScanMyPhotos.com, you can scan 10,000 pictures for as little as $100. And by the way, save 20% on their most popular service, their prepaid photo scanning box that includes same-day scanning and all extra add-ons. And to access it all, of course, the promo code is Extreme Jeans. That's ScanMyPhotos.com, promo code Extreme Jeans. Finally, a solution. Hey, welcome back to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And we love hearing from our listeners and answering your questions about your research, about your photographs, about your videos, about your preservation, whatever it may be. And so we're beginning a new thing here, an Ask Us Anything segment, a couple of segments at the back end of the show that will include all the different topics we're talking about and all of our various expert friends. And the first one to kick it off today is the photo detective, Maureen Taylor. How are you, Maureen? Hey, Scott. I'm great. How are you? Awesome. I'm excited about this and excited to get the questions we're going to be receiving as we progress with this. And by the way, we've set up a special email if you have questions about whatever. It's askusanything at extremegenes.com. So let's start with some questions, Maureen, that you have typically gotten since we haven't plugged this at all in the past. And uh, we really aren't prepared with any direct questions. But you hear the same stuff over and over and over again. So we'll start with one of these. Where was this picture taken? You must get that all the time. All the time. So thank you very much for asking me to be on the show to answer popular questions that are asked of me. And this is one of the most common ones, which is where was my photo taken? Was it taken here in this country or was it taken overseas? And it's actually sort of a multifaceted answer. You have to look at the photo and see if there's a backdrop behind the people that are standing there because the backdrops can actually give you clues as to where the picture was taken. Like sometimes there's a particular building in the background. One of the ones I saw online this week was a picture of a minister and behind him on the backdrop was the church. 
where he preached, which was kind of cool. But also, you have to look at your family history. So you have to date the photo, and then you have to think about where your people were at that time. And that alone might tell you whether it was taken here or whether it was taken there. And this can obviously encompass what they're wearing at a certain point in time also, right, because of the styles. Right. I mean, dating the photo relies on things like, you know, the format of the picture, the particular card stock that was used, the what they're wearing, what the props are. All kinds of things can feature into figuring out when a picture was taken. But once you have that approximate date, then you can look at your family history and do that sort of immigration research. And it may be that the person came from overseas and came here at a particular time. Right. And this photo fits into that time frame because our immigrant ancestors loved to have pictures taken before they left home. But they also took pictures when they arrived and got established. So these are pictures that don't have a photography studio on them or, you know, a place on them. These are like random pictures where you're looking at them and thinking, what's going on here? Yeah. 40s, 50s, somewhere in there, of course. Okay, question number two. Can I take apart my black photo album? Oh, Scott, is that a popular (laughs) question? (laughs) Yeah, you know what? I mean, I've got these two, and people want to know if they can get behind the pictures to see if something's written on them. And I've certainly found writing on some of them, but it's not really common, is it? It's not really common, because our ancestors, when they put these albums together, you have to think about the album as you can read an album like you read a story. There's a story there. The person who put those albums together didn't do it just helter-skelter. They did it with intent and purpose. A They're theme. telling a story, a, a theme. They're telling a story of their life, even if it's just a chronological story. And so in that early 20th century period where they wrote with white ink under the pictures, that's usually all there is. And if you take those albums apart, you lose the context of the story. Ooh, that's such a painful thought. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we return, we got two more questions for Ask Us Anything with Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, coming up next on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chart Masters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartMasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chart Masters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multi- Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family history research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for the Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's top 10 tips for beginning genealogists from the Chief Genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for the Weekly Genie.
We are back at it. It's Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, our final segment for this week, talking to Maureen Taylor. She is the photo detective, and it's our new segment, Ask Us Anything, at ExtremeGenes.com, and it's going to be covering all kinds of different topics. Of course, Tom Perry talking about preservation and many other experts on all kinds of different things. So be sure to email us at AskUsAnything at ExtremeGenes.com to get your questions in, and as we bring in various experts, you may hear your questions questions on the show. And uh, Maureen, here's one that's very common for you, I'm sure. I have a photo of, and people think they have celebrity photos often from, from way in the background. And I know that you've been out there, you've actually been on Pawn Stars trying to authenticate whether a picture was what, from Abraham Lincoln? Yes, indeed. This is a very common question. I have a photo of, and you fill in the blank, it can be anywhere from Western gunslinger to a different kind of celebrity from the 19th century. And the beauty of saying, I have a photo of, is that you can image research these people online and find other photographs to compare them to. Now, for instance, if you wanted to say that you had a picture of Jesse James, for instance, and you search online for pictures of Jesse James, you are going to come up with way more than a couple of handfuls. But the question is, Are they the same person? Are they all Jesse James? Right. So you have to think about how do their faces compare and what are the points in the face that compare. But more than that, you have to think about the life of that photo. If you just buy a random image off eBay or in an antique shop with nothing attached to it, there's no backstory to it, it's going to be really hard to prove that that person, even if they look just like the famous person is actually that person because in order to sell it at auction they're going to want a little bit more they're going to want to know where that picture came from i mean if you have all the provenance as we know and it came down in your family and your family's related to jesse james then you know the odds are a little better sure but there's a lot of people unfortunately who buy images that they think are very famous people and they, they pay too much money for them, and it turns out that they're not actually those famous people. I know you've had some people so, actually get very upset with you, haven't you, over your debunking of their photograph? I have. I have indeed. Kind of an occupational <laughs> we'll hazard, I'm thinking. Huh? <laughs> I like to joke that I've solved many a family argument, but I've caused a few Caused a few more? Absolutely. I've caused a few more. You've got a lot of things to teach people, and I know you've been doing this for some time. Where can people catch up with you? You've got your own podcast. I do, The Photo Detective. It's on iTunes. And I have my website, MaureenTaylor.com, where you can find out about my courses on identifying family photographs or organizing your family pictures. And for all of your listeners that may have heard about my last muster project, The films that we got funding for five years ago are now a reality, and they're on my website, and anyone can watch them, and they can play them for their genealogy groups and their DAR groups and their SAR groups, pretty much a school group. Anyone who wants to play them can pretty much play them. Awesome. So for all of you that listen to Extreme Genes, you can save $20 off one of my photo identification courses by entering Extreme, all lowercase, in the coupon box in your shopping cart. Excellent. That's awesome, Maureen. We really appreciate that. And thanks for answering the questions here. I think it's a great kickoff to ask us anything. And once again, no matter the topic, whether it's DNA or record sets or preservation or photography or whatever it may be, we have a special email address set up for this. It's askusanything at extremegenes.com. Talk to you again soon, Maureen. Thanks so much. Thanks, Scott. That is our show for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. If you missed any of it or you want to share it with your friends, it's easy to find us. We're on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and ExtremeGenes.com. And don't forget to sign up for our weekly Genie newsletter at ExtremeGenes.com or on our Facebook page. Hey, we will talk to you again next week. Thanks for joining us. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. Family.